Welcome to another ultrasound case of the month. My name is Greg Zahn, and I am an assistant professor of clinical emergency medicine, a member of the emergency medicine ultrasound division. If you're new to the series, these monthly cases serve to provide education as it relates to ultrasound utilization, helping provide great care for our patients. Just a reminder for the residents and staff, please email me if you encounter an interesting case that should be highlighted for educational purposes. As an added bonus, residents receive this Yeti water bottle if his or her case is selected. On that note, congrats to our PGY2 resident, Dr. Victor Lola, who managed this patient along with his attending, Dr. Lauren Stewart. These two physicians were working together when a 35-year-old female presented with the chief complaint of abdominal pain. The onset was earlier that morning and described as a constant non-radiating pain. The patient did not report any urinary symptoms, vaginal bleeding, or discharge. Of course, there is always more to the history, and she mentioned her last menstrual cycle was approximately nine weeks ago. However, she did not take a home pregnancy test prior to her ED evaluation. Vital signs were obtained and were essentially unremarkable except for a borderline low blood pressure. Physical exam was remarkable for tenderness and lower abdomen without rigidity or guarding. Given the name of the series, the next step should be of no surprise. An ultrasound was utilized at bedside as labs were obtained. The following images were obtained by Dr. Lola. As can be seen by the label, this is a transverse appearance of the uterus. Rather than me showing all the relevant pelvic anatomy, I really want the viewer to take the time to interpret the imaging on his or her own. We will get back to the image and I will depict relevant anatomy later in the presentation. Make sure to analyze all parts of the video and use the subsequent discussion to help improve your ultrasound skill. Here's another transverse view displaying a slightly different orientation. I will give you a hint. This image shows additional findings important to the case that were not clearly visible in the previous video. Please take some time to review before we move on to the last image. The final video is a sagittal cut of the uterus. As is often the case, imaging in different planes gives useful information which aids in accurate interpretation. Take a little time before we progress into the interpretation images. Now you can test your interpretation skills for the previous images. Here is the first transverse view. In this view, you can clearly see the uterus. One concept we teach for OB ultrasound is to focus on the aspects of the scan which people often view as less important. This strategy is quite similar to the classic teaching for how to read a chest x-ray. Using this strategy, focus less on identification of a fetus and more on the anatomy of the pelvic organs, specifically the relationship of the uterus with the bladder. To help any viewers new to pelvic ultrasound, I've highlighted the uterus here. I will be the first to admit that the bladder in this view appears odd. On similar cases, residents have often said that it appears the patient has two bladders. I have highlighted the two hypoechoic areas here. We can clearly see demarcation from one hypoechoic area from the other. It can be difficult to determine which structure is actually the bladder. Often you can tell by looking for the circumferential bladder wall containing the fluid. Anytime you want to reach a conclusion that the patient has two bladders, think again. If you see this, you should immediately think about free fluid in the pelvis. In this case, the physicians were able to determine the presence of free fluid. Additionally, there is not evidence of a gestational sac with a yolk sac or fetal pole within the uterus, and thus no intrauterine pregnancy is identified. Now on to the second transverse image. In this view, we are in a slightly different orientation than the previous video. We now see a structure that appears consistent with a gestational sac and a fetal pole. I have highlighted the area to show the structure of concern. It is concerning because this structure is clearly outside the confines of the uterus. This view alone confirms the diagnosis of atopic pregnancy and provides a disposition decision within minutes of patient arrival. This highlights the importance of bedside physician ultrasound because even if you have the ability to obtain formal radiology ultrasound, there is often significant delay in image acquisition interpretation. And finally, the third image being the sagittal view, to provide a quick refresher of anatomy, we can see uterus into cervical and vaginal stripe. We see the classy relationship of the uterus and the bladder. 
We can also see reactivity of the endometrial swipe in this view as well, which is the bright vertical area within the uterus. I have highlighted the uterus as well as the endometrial stripe to help with interpretation. Now that we have clearly identified uterus, we can see the ectopic pregnancy is visualized superior to the uterus. I have color coded the relevant anatomy with the ectopic in orange, the uterus in blue, and the bladder in green. After these images were obtained, the patient was typed and screened. OB was emergently consulted, and the patient subsequently went to the operating room for surgical management. In the OR, our OB colleagues identified a ruptured left tubal ectopic with approximately 500 cc's of hemoperitoneum, and the patient required a left salbingectomy, and she ultimately did well and was discharged post-op day one. Luckily, this patient never became hemodynamically unstable, which is a testament to the care and rapid disposition provided by doctors Lola and Stewart. I chose this case to present because it showed the importance of bedside ultrasound in helping us take better care of our patients. Additionally, it provides the opportunity to address a few common misconceptions. The first concept I want to review is what represents an intrauterine pregnancy. We teach that an IUP is represented by a gestational sac and either a yolk sac or a fetal pole. A gestational sac is not enough because it can represent a pseudo-gestational sac, which is an endometrial reaction that can be seen with an ectopic pregnancy. You have to see a structure within the gestational sac to be confident that this represents an intrauterine pregnancy. The next concept I often see misinterpreted is the utilization of beta in decision making. There is a discriminatory zone which is institutional dependy often around 2000. However, this number represents when an IUP should be visible on transvaginal ultrasound. This threshold is for most pregnancies, yet is not perfect, and normal pregnancies may not be visualized at or even above this threshold. Additionally, this represents transvaginal ultrasound. For transabdominal ultrasound, references often cite a beta level of 6500, yet transabdominal imaging is more dependent on patient body habitus. Just because a beta is below 2000, it should not reassure you. I repeat for emphasis, it should not reassure you. A thorough evaluation ultrasound still needs to be performed. Some references state as high as 50% of ectopic pregnancies present with a beta less than 1,000. It is important to remember that ectopic gestations are not normal pregnancies, and thus often don't behave like a normal pregnancy with respect to the beta HCG. Even with a low beta, an ectopic is quite possible and the patient needs to be evaluated with ultrasound. Thanks for your time and attention. Continue utilizing ultrasound to provide great care for your patients. As always, email me with any questions or concerns.